Greetings captains and welcome to the fifth VFR lesson in the Flight Sim School video tutorial series. My name is Thomas Rasmussen and to help me I have flight instructor Cameron aka Voidhawk9 from the explain.org forums. If you spend much time at all flying a flight sim, chances are you have encountered a stall. A stall in aviation is not an engine stall that you may be familiar with, but an aerodynamic stall in which the wing passes a critical angle and loses lift. Wings can efficiently produce lift over a narrow range of angles. If the air is flowing straight on to the leading edge of the wing, its angle is zero degrees. If we tilt the leading edge of the wing upward 10 degrees, then the wing is at an angle of attack of 10 degrees. The maximum angle of attack at which the wing will produce lift efficiently is known as a critical angle and will vary depending on the wing plan form and airfoil shape. For light aircraft like our Cessna 172, the critical angle is typically around 15 or 16 degrees. As the angle of the wing increases, the amount of lift it produces increases up until the critical angle. Past that point, the amount of lift produced drops off, usually rather steeply. Drag also increases as the angle of attack increases, but it will increase substantially faster after the critical angle. Why does this occur? At small angles of attack, air flows over the wing smoothly and sticks to the surface of the wing. At the stall, however, the change in direction and pressure over the wing becomes too great and the air breaks away and becomes turbulent. For level flight, the lift generated by the wing must be equal to the aircraft weight. A simplified lift equation is angle of attack times indicated airspeed equals lift. If we slow down, lift will decrease. If we still want to maintain our altitude, then we must increase the angle of attack in order to maintain the same amount of lift at the lower speed. If we slow down still further, we must increase the angle of attack further. If we continue to do this, eventually we will exceed the critical angle of the wing. Lift will reduce and drag will increase. The practical result is that our aircraft's nose will pitch down and we will begin to lose altitude. This is the stall. Before we learn what to do about a stall, let's learn to recognize it. The best way to deal with a stall is to avoid it in the first place. So first we'll look at signs of an approaching stall. Low and decreasing airspeed, high nose attitude, low engine power, low noise from engine and airflow, reduced control responsiveness, light control buffeting, stall warning light and horn if fitted. If you detect some or all of these symptoms, be aware you may be about to stall. At the stall itself you'll experience heavy control buffet, nose pitches down, aircraft begins to lose altitude, and a wing may drop. Remember, the stall is caused by the angle of attack being too great. Therefore, to unstall the aircraft, you must reduce the angle of attack. The standard stall recovery is as follows. Simultaneously, lower the nose and set full power smoothly. Don't slam the throttle. This will unstall the aircraft and quickly begin accelerating the aircraft to a safe speed above 65 knots. Roll quickly to wings level if you are not level already. Raise the nose to the horizon or roughly a level attitude. Accelerate to VY speed and climb if desired if you have lost altitude in the stall. For the purpose of this lesson we will simply return to level flight so that we can note the height loss in the recovery. Before we begin the practice exercise, we will ensure that we have clear airspace. Therefore, we should be at least 3000 feet above ground and ensure that there's no obstacles in the vicinity that we can fly into, such as hills, other aircraft, clouds and so on. In real life flying, you would make a 90 or 180 degree turn to ensure the airspace around you is clear. 
Like in the previous tutorials, we've set ourselves up in the air, flying straight and level at an exact altitude of 4000 feet. This will be important when later we'll see how much altitude we lost in the stall recovery. Also, note a fixed reference point ahead. First we'll enter and recover from a level stall in a clean, flaps up, unpowered configuration. Let's first try a stick recovery. This is the standard stall recovery, but without adding power. The point is to show that the power is not needed to break the stall and will provide a reference to see how much less height we'll lose when we do use power later on. Now let's smoothly reduce the engine power to idle. The aircraft will begin to slow down. As it does so, raise the nose to maintain the altitude. Use a bit of trim to help hold the nose up, but only until you pass about 80 knots. After that, just use the stick. As you reach the stall speed, which might be off the clock on the airspeed indicator, remember that the nose will pitch down no matter what you do. As the stall occurs, you should be quite nose up, using quite a bit of back stick to hold it there. We know that in order to unstall the aircraft, we must reduce the angle of attack. To do this, just relax the back pressure on the stick you are already holding. There should be no need to push it forward any further than that. With the back pressure removed, the aircraft will naturally nose down and unstall. This is the stick recovery, because we used the stick only to unstall the aircraft. Roll wings level and add power and return to straight and level at whatever altitude you are at now. Notice that you'll have lost probably in excess of 300 feet. Imagine if you had stalled on short final to land, you might not have 300 feet to lose. To minimize the height loss in the recovery, we need to increase the acceleration in the recovery so that we can level or climb sooner at a safe speed. Now let's try to apply the proper standard stall recovery. Approach the stall again as we did before. As you decelerate, look for symptoms of the approaching stall. You may need a little rudder to stay straight. It can be hard to tell if you are straight with the nose up obscuring the ground. Use a cloud or you may be able to see some features down the side of the panel. As soon as you notice symptoms of the stall approaching, stop using the ailerons. If you do, you may stall one wing before the other resulting in a wing drop which we'll discuss later. As before, when the stall occurs, allow the nose to drop, but at the same time smoothly increase the throttle to full power. Now the aircraft will recover to a safe speed above 65 knots much sooner, and you'll be able to level the wings and return to level much sooner. The result is less height lost. Practice a few stalls. With practice using the correct technique, you should encounter minimum height loss. Try some recoveries from just before the stall occurs. Done gently and correctly, you might not lose any height at all. This is the ideal stall recovery occurring before the stall actually happens. And note, if you are having difficulty with the aircraft rolling sharply at the stall, try using a bit less control to hold the nose up. Move the controls more gently and recover a little sooner. Now we'll try some stalls with flaps, power or both. We'll begin by considering the individual effects of power and or flaps on a stall. As we know, having flaps down allows us to slow down more easily and to fly more slowly. Leaving power on makes it harder to slow down, but also makes it easier to fly slowly. We will consider four effects for this lesson abbreviated to dash. Deceleration, how quickly do we slow down to the stall? Attitude, how nose up are we at the stall? Speed, how slow are we going before we stall? Height loss, how much altitude do we lose recovering from the stall? First consider the effect of flaps alone compared to the basic stall. D, we decelerate more quickly due to the increased drag from the flaps. A, 
the wing is effectively at a higher angle of attack with the flaps down, so the deck angle, which is what we see from the cockpit, will be lower. S stall speed is reduced as the flaps enable us to create enough lift at lower speeds. H we lose more height in the recovery because we are going more slowly when we begin to recover and the extra drag from the flaps restricts our acceleration to a safe speed. Now consider the effect of power only compared to the basic stall. D Deceleration will take longer because we are still producing thrust. A the prop is blowing air over the wing, effectively lowering the angle of attack of the wing in the prop wash, so the deck angle at the stall will be greater. S. Stall speed will be lower, as with the nose high, the thrust is actually helping to pull the aircraft up, so the wing doesn't have to do all the work. H. Height loss will be less, since the engine is already producing some thrust and will reach full power more quickly. Now if we combine these two, approaching a stall with flaps down and power on, D deceleration effects of power and flaps cancel out, so it is similar to the basic stall. A attitude effects also cancel out, again similar to the basic stall. S stall speed effects combine, so the stall speed will be the lowest. H Height loss is similar to the basic stall as the power and flaps effects cancel each other out. Let's try these out in the air. Again, we've set ourselves up in the air at 5000 feet above the ground and the usual 100 knots. We'll first practice a stall with flaps only. Reduce power to idle and once in the wide arc, lower to full flaps 30 degrees. Maintain altitude, remembering that as the flaps lower, the aircraft will want to balloon upwards. Also, as the flaps come down, be aware that deceleration will occur very quickly. As in the basic stall, recover as soon as the nose begins to drop. As soon as you have completed the initial recovery actions, nose down, power up, select flaps 20, this will reduce drag and allow the aircraft to accelerate easier. Once the aircraft is unstalled, select flaps 10. Once you are recovered to level flight, fully retract flaps. Caution! Do not hold the aircraft into the stall or pull into the stall hard with power on or flaps applied, as the aircraft will likely wing drop. If a wing drop does occur, recover as normal rolling level once unstalled. Now try a stall with power on, but flaps up. 1600 RPM should be ok if you maintain your height accurately, but if the aircraft isn't slowing down enough, reduce the RPM by 100 RPM or so. Recover using the standard stall recovery. Now we'll combine power on and flaps down. It's best to recover this one once all the incipient warning symptoms are present rather than the stall itself as wing drop is far more likely. Reduce power to 1600 RPM. Once in the wide arc, lower to full flaps.
when all warning symptoms are present, recover. Retract flaps as in the flaps only recovery, one step at a time. This last configuration, flaps down and power on, is like the aircraft will be configured on final approach to land. It is often referred to as a stall in the approach configuration for this reason. Obviously a stall at that stage of flight needs to be dealt with quickly and correctly. Once you are consistent with approach configuration stall recovery, we can move on to the next lesson, circuits, takeoffs and landings at last. Important things to remember is the standard stall recovery. Nose down, power up, roll wings level, when at safe speed raise the nose to level flight and accelerate to VY and climb. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and found it useful. If so, please remember to share, like and subscribe. From Cameron and I, thank you so much for watching and see you very soon.